Hey guys, Smith here with Minute Maintenance. Now it's almost winter time. It's starting to get a little bit colder outside, which means I'm not going to be able to work in my driveway as easily and comfortably as I have been all summer, spring, and fall. Now what that means is I need to come into my garage when it comes to working on my personal projects as well as projects for friends and family and other customers, and I'm going to need to make this a clean space. I know what you're thinking. It looks pretty good on this particular stall. This is where I like to pull the cars in and to work on. But over on this side of my shop, things kind of got a bit out of hand over the summer. I haven't been paying as much attention to detail, and this really came into one bit of a jumbled, compressed mess with all sorts of things that don't need to be in here, all sorts of wood shavings that need to be blown out of here. And I'm gonna spend the afternoon with you guys doing maintenance to the garage so that we can work all winter long without an interruption. Stick with me, let's get some cleaning done. All right guys, so as you can see, things really got tossed around in here. This became a bit of an overflow epicenter for my tools, my projects, things that don't belong in here in the first place. And we're going to go ahead and uh, spend some time getting everything organized and everything cleaned up so that this winter when I'm wrenching on projects, I know exactly where all my tools and parts are. I know exactly where the things I need to get to are. And I have plenty of space and workbench space. Well, under there, that used to be workbench to operate with what I need to operate with. Even here, let's see what's going on on the side of the 52 Chevy. Yeesh. All right. I don't know what's in that bag over there. Hopefully it's a... Uh, Nothing too traumatic. We'll get that figured out. We'll find a better place to put the motorcycle now that I'm not pulling it out of the driveway. Out of the garage every day to drive her around. Definitely do something with these camping chairs because uh, I don't know about you, but I don't like sitting in lawn chairs in the winter time. If I can avoid that at all costs. We got spare metal that needs to be gotten rid of over here and leftover parts. And ugh, it's be a bit of a project ahead of us, but we'll get this handled. So first thing I got here right now is all the summer things. I got my power washer that I use to power wash my driveway and power wash my house. I'm not going to be doing that in the middle of the winter time. That, that'd be silly. I don't need an ice skating rink on my house or in my driveway. So I'm going to put that back out in my shed. Those lawn chairs can go out back in the shed as well. As well as the outdoor skateboard and, and scooters for the kids because... Again, it's winter time. You can't be using that stuff. So that's going to clear up a lot of space right there. I'm going to take all those things and get those put away nicely. Not, not cluttered. No need to take clutter from this space and clutter somewhere else. I'll put them exactly where they go in the shed. Make everything look nice that route. And then we can keep working on clearing up some space and getting things a little more organized in here. All right, next up on our list to help clear out space and declutter and organize this garage, we got a bunch of, bunch of trash here. Now, that shop vac, it does technically function not as well as I want. I got a much better shop vac that I picked up a couple months ago, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one. I got some scrap metal I can take in and get maybe five ten dollars worth but i'm gonna be driving past the scrap yard to get the dump anyway to throw away that drywall and all this other refuse and i got a bunch of scrap wood in the backyard i gotta get rid of as well so next thing we'll do is get rid of this and that's gonna clear up a whole bunch of space this little section right here is already starting to look a little bit better once we get to reorganizing everything's gonna look a lot a lot better and be a lot more serviceable All right, next up, I keep a lot of my bigger tools, my pneumatic tools, my electric tools, uh, impacts, drills, saws. I like to keep those underneath the tool chest. And I see, for whatever reason, I decide to leave a bunch of them sitting on the floor and on the bench. So I'll get those picked up and gently, gently placed into the bottom of the tool chest. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I took everything out. And I'm going to organize my under storage area. Look at all these electric and pneumatic tools I got all those wires I'm going to use I'm going to use some bread ties I've saved over the years in a plastic bag as I'm going through well bread I'm going to use those to tie up some of these cords clean up a little bit and I'm going to try to organize it in there from what items I use most daily towards the front and least likely to use towards the back and this is the before and like that bam now everything's in there Perfect. Beautiful. Out of sight, out of mind. All right, right here I have a few things that go specifically to the 52 Chevy here. I have a radiator shroud, oil pan gasket, and carburetor rebuild kit that you'll be sh I'll be showing you some videos and what I'm going to do to that. This car actually is running and driving the way it is. When I got her, she was sitting in a machine shed out in the middle of a field for the last 
40 years, I believe it was 1981 was the last time it was registered based on the uh, on the paperwork. 81, 91, that's about 40 years, I think. I'm not very good at math. Motor was seized up. Took me about a weekend to get that taken care of. Now I'm just on to the little nicks and knacks. I'm just changing wiring on the inside. I got to change the oil pan gasket. Carburetor is working good, but they tend to ride right away the seals on the inside. And we'll go over that here with, with my buddy Derek. We'll get that carburetor rebuilt. But she is technically running and driving, but I'm doing everything I can to make sure that she's a... Uh, better than she was before so let's go ahead and put these things inside the car that way they stay with the car at all times and they don't get mixed up anywhere else with any other items boom now if you'll notice i have a bunch of wood chips and wood dust all over my floor i do a little bit of a woodwork on the side and i had a quick project i had to do real fast and it was cold out didn't feel like going outside and setting up appropriately so i just sawed right here by my bench and i got sawdust everywhere but we're gonna go ahead and get that taken care of right now sweeping twice as fun all right my leaf blower is electric look at this long 50 foot cord we got here i'm gonna go over with you one of my favorite ways to wrap extension cords nowadays now i didn't come up with this i believe it's called a hank wrap and i remember seeing this on a channel called corporal's corner on youtube corporal's corner he goes over all sorts of different camping bushcraft cordage tying techniques and this is one of my favorite ways to tie ropes and cordage of any kind so stick with me we'll knock this out now first things first want two pivot points i'm using my spigot head there and i'm going to use this part of the hose wrap on that side leave a little bit extra there got about four feet worth of cord there and we're just going to start making ourselves a figure eight and we're going to continue to do this back and forth until all 50 foot of the cord is wrapped up in it. And the real trick of keeping everything together comes at the very end. All right, now they got everything nice and wound up there in a figure eight pattern. I'm just gonna take this extra four foot here section, and I'm gonna wrap that around the middle, binding everything together, keep it nice and tight, and then you have yourself a nice quick deploy extension cord. Not that you ever need to quick deploy an extension cord, but doing it in this method, as opposed to just winding it up in a in a loop or a circle, I tend to get bird's nests that way, I tend to get a bunch of kinks. Doing it this way, when it comes to expanding the extension cord so I can actually use it, I've never had a kink, not one time. Ooh, and she hangs so pretty too. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. All right, next, I'm going to get this bench cleaned up. I'm going to get everything reorganized where it needs to be. That impact's going to get put away back in its case. And I'm going to take all the little bits and tools that normally sit in that open tool chest down there with the uh, yellow outdoor uh, electrical wiring. I'm going to get all that button back up. I like to keep my jacks my jack stands underneath. My toolboxes that I use on the regular right there in the middle. All right, we're getting close. I went ahead and moved my big rack that was over there, over here. Now, what I had here was four wheels and rims that I got off my 07 Expedition because I swapped out to better rims and tires on that truck. And so these are for sale. Um, I got someone coming to pick them up shortly, so that's not an issue. I'll leave those there for right now until I get those loaded up for them. Same thing with this tonneau cover. I took that off of my pickup truck because I swapped out to a better one. And so those things are getting sold here pretty shortly, so those will be out of the way. That bag of quick crete, which I didn't realize was buried underneath that box with my roll-up cover under there. That's going to go back in the shed. Now, the part I've been dreading. We got the underneath done. We got 
the jacks, the motorcycle jack where I wanted my sawhorse. Now for all of this, start with the simplest thing. Let's go ahead and put that back on the Chevy. left is basically a bunch of screws honestly the, the vast majority of the things I was building treehouse for my kids a bunch of screws here a bunch of screws here they're all in different containers they're an amalgamation of screws I've been saving over the years from different projects I built this little frame here to give me a, another two layers to my workbench a while back and I'm really enjoying these yellow totes that I picked up at at uh, Tyson's to store my stuff, obviously, it's got a little out of hand, so I'll get that reorganized. But I got another yellow tote left and an old Tupperware container that I think I might be able to combine a lot of these screws into and just make things a little bit neater, nicer, and easier to mess with. All right, guys, and there you go, final work product. Now I still have access to this entire garage stall. Everything's nice and clean. Motorcycle is parked behind the 52 Chevy because those are not things to drive in the winter. Again, that truck, that uh, tuxedo, truck seato cover is being sold along with those tires. So those will be out here soon. And everything is nice and organized. You want to keep all your, your oils on the bottom. Everything up top, we start getting to less spill likely oils and, and cleaning products. You want to keep your oils at the bottom. That way, if anything does happen to spill, it doesn't stain and ruin everything. So I got all my heavy oils and transmission fluids down at the bottom. Workbench is completely cleared off tool chest every drawer is nice and closed and everything is where it needs to be and accessible jacks at the bottom i got these nice yellow totes organized this is my brake and oil draining related items hose and clamp related items carpentry related items and clamps and then all my electrical stuff as far as my obd2 scanner my battery tester for ohms and all those good stuff. I got my fishing rods there just because I don't like to do any ice fishing. I don't really use this particular type of pegboard, but I got my first aid kit. Worst case scenario, I got my nunchucks in case anybody comes at me while I'm trying to change my oil. I can handle business real quick and easy like. And I got a couple saws there and I got full ability to walk here. Now the motorcycle isn't going to stay exactly where that is. Once we get another nice warmer day out, I'm going to Get that motorcycle ready for winter storage. That's what she'll end up being for the most part, but I'll move her head a little bit more. But she'll go through a winter storage process, and I'll make a video so you guys know how to do that for your per personal motorcycles as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys found this useful. A clean garage is a happy garage. You know where everything is. Everything's nice and organized. Makes it easier to work on things. That way your projects get done quicker and faster because no one wants to be out here in the middle of the winter when it's cold out wrenching on stuff, even though I do have a nice heater. Regardless, you don't want to be out here. Keep everything nice and organized and take a minute out of your days, guys. I hope you do to do some cleaning and do some maintenance. Catch you next time.